Welcome to Lord Drainlid TV. Hello, welcome to my TV. To Mr. Newnham wearing flat cap. <laughs> They've occupied the chapel, a whole army of them. They've occupied King's College Chapel. There must be 10,000 of them, a whole flipping army, wearing dirty t shirts, scruffy anoraks, old smelly trainers, an army of 10,000 at least, fat and on a diet of live baby head jobs dead badgers, and goldfishes. I have to go to tell the others. They've occupied King's College Chapel. Who are? <laughs> Exit Mr. Leonard. Enter Lord Drainlet. Hello. May I welcome you to the first annual conference of the Support Lord Drainlid Party. The SLDP to you. Marvelous, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. And a very special welcome to those of you unable to be here tonight. Those engaged at the very forefront of our struggle. Thank you. The front rows here are reserved for the disadvantaged minorities. The unemployed. The ethnic minorities. Peace groups. Women. There are no seats just here. We have to leave room for the wheelchairs. I welcome those who are listening to my speech on the compulsory community tannoy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I am, of course, Lord Drainlid, the real one. Beware of imitations. I named myself after the lid of the drain outside my castle. I am Lord Drainlid. I cover everything, everything, including Lady Drainlid. Ladies and gentlemen, before I begin my first paper, I must tell you, there is no truth in the rumor that our marriage has ended. In fact, I believe Lady Rain Lid is here among you tonight, with the contingent from the Women's Resources Center, whom I also humbly welcome. <laughs> Darling, there is no truth in the rumor of a liaison between myself and Miss Cherry Hinton. Miss Cherry Hinton has merely been of invaluable help in the preparation of the drain lid papers. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There have been other lies about me. Lies put about by spies and traitors of the university. Do not listen to them. I do not eat babies, not live ones. Anyway. <laughs> the university. Of course is trying to undermine me. In fact the university is undermining all aspects of the western intellectual tradition. Nietzsche. Gandhi. I knew Gandhi. I knew him well. Oh. The starvation. The third class railway travel. We found it exit you know. Exit? It's a club. You can kill yourself anytime you want to. Ladies and gentlemen. We must defend that great western intellectual tradition. Clive James, the Ayatollah, and, of course Plato. I am very interested in the concept of platonic love. Particularly when it comes to Miss Cherry Hinton whom I've never touched. <laughs> and I won't leave the girls out. Jermaine Greer, Enid Blyton, and Bertrand Russell. Where are you now Bertie? You loved your wife so deeply. Except when cycling of course. Ladies and gentlemen. In or out of my drain mobile. I love my lady drain lead. Ladies and gentlemen. Tonight I shall be asking conference. Tonight I am asking conference. Give me your mothers and toddlers. Give me your prams. Come with me. And I will lead you. From the rear. Single handedly. I shall recapture our freedom. Our industry. Our heritage. Yes, we may sustain losses. Some of your prams may go missing. But that will be a small sacrifice compared with the thousand years to come. A thousand years of pride and accomplishment. 
and with your support and my plans, I can personally guarantee every one of you 1000 years of full employment. To be continued. Councillor Dave Strippine has designed the walk especially for you. Dave's got a really nice walk. Polly looks tasty too. Join the support Lord's Rainland Party today. Get your free uniform, free rosette, stove pipe hat, and 1,000 years of full employment in the Copperwood Mines. Don't delay. Join today. Welcome to Lord Drainlid TV. Hello, welcome to my TV. Dear Lord Drainlid has asked me to introduce part two of his speech from my kitchen. Ouch. Ladies and gentlemen, my first paper brings with it a very happy announcement. The mining of coprolite will be resumed. Coprolite. Black gold. Coprolite is fossilized dinosaur droppings. Coprolite. From the ancient Greek copris meaning dung and lithos meaning stone. Dung stone. Fossilized dung. Coprolite can be mixed with acid to be used as fertilizer and flogged off as such. Oh, Lady Drainlid, where is your riding crop? <laughs> flogged off at enormous profit, it built the guild hall, and your hospital. The richest seams were on Coldham's Common, a working class area. In 1867 they became exhausted. But now vast new seams have been discovered under the university, under King's College Chapel, discovered by my gardener Mr. Newnham. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I beg your pardon? No, it is not smelly. Well not very smelly anyway. Not too bad. Dinosaurs were vegetarians you see. They ate only the best muesli. Bought in big sacks from the health food shop. None of your co-op alpen for them. Very good value of those 56 pound sacks. Don't you think? <laughs> Dinosaurs were marvelous things. They are extinct now. Incidentally. But their droppings are all over the city. Fossilized. Coprolite. Black gold. If you look closely enough at it. You can actually see the muesli. Oh, look, there's a raisin, and a nut, ladies and gentlemen, no copper light mining has been carried out in this city since 1867, and we all know who stopped it don't we, yes, the university stopped it, Shack Hughes. <laughs> Meda, Stronzo, et pourquoi? Because there are vast deposits of coprolite under the university, the richest being under King's College Chapel. So you can see, our struggle is both intellectual and economic. Coprolite mining is our industry, in fact our only industry, and the university has taken it from us. For a hundred years you my people have been slaves in the college kitchens, scrubbing pots, cleaning lavatories. Ugh. Oh those university lavatories. But I will set you free. I will return you to your minds. I will lead you triumphantly. To freedom. To economic and social fulfillment of a kind never witnessed before. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I beg your pardon? A note. A note. But I never use notes. Ah. A letter for me. 
Oh, how kind. I tell you what, it simply has to be from my lady. Oh, I must read it to you. She is coming home I am sure. I know she is coming home. Dear Rainmaid, Yoix, Tally Ho, I have been listening to your speech on the compulsory community tannoy. I am not coming back. You did something unspeakable to my poodle Bono on our wedding night. Not coming back? My lady is not coming back. I cannot believe that. But I have so many interesting positions to offer her. But I am very fond of Bono. I love Bono. Bono is my little four letter friend. It was a case of mistaken identity. That little poodle has been my inspiration. It was through him that I discovered periscopic thinking. Time and space is curved. There is no such thing as a straight line you see. Your future is behind you. You never know what is going to happen because it is always around the corner. That's periscopic thinking. What? No. Supine thinking never did work. Whoever had a great thought lying down? I know Gandhi didn't. I shall never come back unless it is to throw myself under the community minibus. Long live the cause. To live Signed Lady Rainlid. Miss? 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 That was never Lady Rainlade. I must read that again. Lady Rainlade. Miss. The women's refuge. The refuge. The refuge. But I have done so much good work for the refuge. The university is behind this. She is being held against her will. Peas. 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 R. P. S. P. S. I enclose a recent photograph. The old fur coat, the permanent wave, the outsized spectacles. What has she been doing to herself? The boiler suit. Darling, where are your jodpus, your riding crop, and Bono? He looks so sad. That place cannot be natural for him. You must bring Bono home. He needs me. I think he is going to have puppies. If you bring him home to me I will. I will. I shall privatize the dog's toilets. I shall free the dog's toilets from the shackles of the city council. No more mess on the pavements. There will be a reprocessing plant. And a fast food restaurant which will provide employment for those too young or too old to work in the copper light mines. Ladies and gentlemen. Dinosaurs and our future. Coprolite mines. Privatized dogs toilets. Fast food. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the dialectics of privatization and forms the very basis of our historic struggle against the university. To the chapel. continued. Introducing Lord Rainlet's new public transport system. All aboard! It's free. Welcome to Lord Drainlet TV. Hello. Welcome to my TV. Lord Drainlet has announced that his gardener Mr. Newnham has discovered a seam of coprolite under King's College Chapel. 
He has declared war on the university so that mining can resume. Lady Rain Lid has passed a note to say she will not be returning from the women's refuge. Enter Lord Drainlid. Hello again. Oh, it's marvelous. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like you to relax. Close your eyes and relax if you will. Now cast your eyes back a hundred years or so. You are relaxed and floating. The year is 1867. You can see below you a whole network of narrow streets. It is evening. It is winter. You can see snow lying on the rooftops of the small houses. Nice houses huddling close together in terraces to keep out the cold winds, which sometimes blow across the fence from the Russian steppes, all the way from the Urals. At the moment all is calm. You are calm. Clean white smoke curls up towards you from wood burning stoves. Swedish. Very nice. Window boxes beckon to you. Come down into our community they call. To the west. Across the railway line, lies the guild hall, and your hospital, the women's refuge, and the university. <coughs> and King's College Chapel, to the east on Coldham's Common, a working class area, are the coprolite mines. The mines which in 15 years have improved the standard of our people's lives beyond all recognition. The profits from which built the streets you can now see. Salaries were 10 times higher than those offered for working in the college gardens. Or making game pies for the chancellor. Ugh. Oh those university lavatories. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Your forefathers were now my owners in their own right. For 15 years they commanded their own destinies. They sold coprolite mixed with acid for use as fertilizer. They made fine profits. They built the guild hall. And your hospital. They built their houses in terraces. Built with spoil from the coprolite mines. And they built their communities. There was a new community spirit. Communication between neighbors was so easy. Babysitting circles sprang up everywhere, like little fairy rings, crutches, aerobics. Miss Cherry Hinton runs a very nice class you know, very active, Miss Cherry Hinton. And there is no truth in rumors of a liaison between myself and Miss Cherry Hinton. <laughs> they are all lies. Lies put about by university spies. And I won't leave the girls out. Women's institutes. Girl guides. Brownies. The WRAC. Cubs. Scouts. Size well be come and take your plutonium boy. Oh. Chernobyl please don't react like that. <laughs> Peace groups. The woodcraft folk. Oh. How nice. How lovely. They were all supported. Orphans. Cats. Stray cats. Sick cats suffering from strokes. It was a beautiful pure democracy. When we needed leaders. Chairs were elected. These chairs led committees comprising only the very nicest of people. Those who had a kind smile for even the most disadvantaged. Ladies and gentlemen. I want you to come with me down into those city streets. I want you to look at one particular street. Crimea Street. All is quiet. Coprolite carts have finished their daily rush about the streets shaking the houses to their foundations and endangering the lives of toddlers. The snow falls lightly, interrupted only by the occasional icy blast all the way from the Urals. Right across the Russian steppes. Oh look across the street, there's a drain lid. Have you noticed incidentally, that drain lids are the very last to freeze over?
They have so much warmth you see. And, oh look, there's a penny farthing. It has a lovely child's plastic seat on the back. The penny farthing is leaning up against the window of number 13 Crimea Street. Ladies and gentlemen, may I remind you that without copper light there would have been none of this prosperity. The guild hall, your hospital, the narrow streets, the community, they were all paid for by the profits from copper light mining. To be continued. Hi, I'm Dave Strip, I'm leader of the dinner party and well known local gourmet. I just were meeting in the long spoon in Kingston Street off Mill Road. <laughs> I am Polly de Fribbleetwell and I eat in the Long Spoon every Sunday with my husband Quentin. Welcome to Lord Drainlid TV. Hello, welcome to my TV. Dear Lord Drainlid has asked me to introduce part 4 from my kitchen. Copperlite ladies and gentlemen. Black gold. Fossilized dinosaur droppings. Vast new seams have been found under the university. Under King's College Chapel. Copperlite. From the ancient Greek. Copperus meaning dung and lithos meaning stone you see. There is a mess on the pavement. I beg your pardon? There's a mess on the pavement? I know there is a mess on the pavement. But I have told you. I am going to do something about that. I am going to privatize the dog's toilets. I am Lord Drainlid. I cover everything. Including Lady Drainlid. The dialectics of privatization you fools. Lady Drainlid writes to me every day you know. Look. I have her note here. She's not coming back. Not coming back? It can't be true. I must read the note through again. Read between the lines this time. Not coming back. Bono. Something unspeakable. Wedding night. I did nothing to Bono. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. It must be a forgery. Lies. Lies put about by university spies. They are trying to destroy my speech. Ha 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 ha. Sterling M3. Arrest that woman. She is a member of the dinner party with whom I shall never form a coalition. No not even in 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you here tonight a university forgery. Oh, I feel so much better. Now I know the truth I feel so calm. Write her a letter, Lord Drainlid. No, I will reply to her through my compulsory community tannoy. She will listen. My dear lady, darling, dearest, how do you think that sounds? My darling hot jodpers. Yes, that sounds better. I urgently command your presence at the castle. Have dinner with me please. Please? Do you think I should say please? Number. I must be the master. Dinner is served. Come back. I love you. Should I say I love her? Darling. I want you to bring Bono and your riding crop. I need you. You know I need you. You silly little thing. Do not listen to those university people. They only want to use you. I cannot bear to think of anyone else touching you. Not there anyway. Uh, I mean not in that place. Not in the women's refuge. How I hate those people. I hate them. That's good isn't it? Sometimes jealousy can be so attractive. I want you with me forever. I won't do it anymore. I promise. I don't want to die alone. I am so afraid. That coffin. The terrible heat. I want you with me. And Bono at our feet. Love from Drainy. Sealed with a loving kiss. 
That is very good isn't it? Marvelous. A very nice letter. That should do the trick. Could you write one like that? I don't think so. I feel so much better now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you will remember that you are in Crimea Street, outside number 13. The street is deserted. Now look in through the front window of number 13. You can see the cozy little front room. The Aspidistra. The beautiful pine furniture. The mid-Victorian dinner set piled up on the sideboard there. The high-tech gas fire keeping the winter cold out. Yes. There was high-tech then. Come right in, ladies and gentlemen. You can see that there has been a dinner party. A real dinner party not the sham you see now. Corsets have been undone. Spats have been loosened. A great deal of wine has been drunk. Remnants of game pie lie about the place in bacchanalian fashion. There has been wife swapping. Footsie. Laudanum has been passed around. The candle lit chandelier casts rainbow shadows on the happy assembly. One small child is sitting up in his pram beside the Aspidistra. A very nice child. Highly advanced for his age. Already very, very handsome. Very attractive. Yes, I was that child. Already very much in love with the daughter of a wealthy copper light carter. Yes, it was Lady Rainlid. Ladies and gentlemen, with the grown-ups in the front room of number 13 Crimea Street in the city of Cambridge, we are awaiting news about negotiations, talks, with the university, talks about our rights to mine coprolite from under King's College Chapel. There is an air of relaxed cautious optimism about the place. I am happily enjoying my mashed banana with cream and jam. When suddenly there is a loud hammering at the door. It bursts open. Almost coming off its hinges. Mr. Newnham, my gardener and second cousin twice removed on my mother's side falls in from the street. They've occupied the chapel. A whole army of them. They've occupied King's College Chapel. There must be 10,000 of them. A whole flipping army. Wearing dirty t-shirts. Scruffy anoraks. Old smelly trainers, an army of 10,000 at least, fat and on a diet of live baby head jobs, dead badgers, and goldfishes. I have to go to tell the others, they've occupied King's College Chapel, who are. And he rushed off to spread the news of university treachery throughout the city. Ladies and gentlemen, as I sat up and looked from my pram on that dark day in the winter of 1867, I saw our community die. Its lifeblood drained away. In 1867 the mining of copper light ceased. And we all know who stopped it. Our industry. Yes. The university stopped it. Shack use. Ladies and gentlemen. I have waited a great deal of time for the right moment to return to you. To recapture our heritage. There have been world wars. The invention of the motor car. The Charleston. Lady Rainlord was very good at that. The walk. Now I am here to say to you tonight. To any agent of the university intent on stealing our right to mine copper light. I shall never negotiate. Ladies and gentlemen. Sovereignty over King's College Chapel is in no way negotiable. We cannot discuss it. Whatever has been published in the national press. I will not argue with them. It is only now. With the drain lid papers. With the dialectics of privatization. Only now can I smell the sweet breeze of freedom blowing. Can I rescue copper like man from the dark void in which he has been placed by the university. Can I with your prams and your toddlers. Yes. Even the tiniest tots can stand to attention. And those in prams will be used for reconnaissance. Only with me leading you. From the rear. Can I recapture our heritage? Prams to the front. Get some Blanco on those baby grows. A fire is burning in your hearts. Rise up. I shall lead you. I know what is in your hearts. A thousand years off full employment. I shall reopen the mines. With your support I shall single handedly recapture King's College Chapel and remove it from the site of the world's greatest open cast copper light mine. Advance.
to the chapel, and the SAS to the refuge.